All brothers and sisters in Kinoya, I'm very happy to be here this morning. It's my privilege to be here to share the word of God. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's not our plan. It's God's plan. Amen? Yeah, God brought me from Korea to Fiji. So, yeah, last four years I have ministry in Nakandrobe in South South the side there. And then this year, last February, I moved down to Suba. And then, yeah, Pastor Maraban, yeah, he allowed me to come here to share the word of God here. So, God has a beautiful plan for each one of you. God wants to tell you something this morning. So don't expect me, expect God. Amen? Yeah, my ability is, my English is not enough to touch your heart. But our Father God, Holy Spirit, He will touch your heart. Amen? So yeah, let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for your beautiful calling each one of us here. We're gathering here to worship you. And then we want to listen to your voice. Holy Spirit, please tell us. We want to listen. Holy Spirit, please help us to open our spiritual ears. And then our heart also. Thank you, Lord. You are so good, God, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, today the word of God is uh, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Okay, so Philippians chapter 4. Verse 4 to 9. Okay. Let's read uh, together. I will read verse 4 and then you can read 5 and 6, 7 like that. Okay. I will start. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let, yeah, your turn. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petitions with thanksgivings, present your request to God. Verse 7. Finally, brother, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Verse 9. Amen, amen. Around 2,000 years ago, Apostle Paul, he wrote this book. This book is a kind of letter to Philippians. When he had second mission trip, he visited Philippi. The village name is Philippi. So he starts one church there in Philippi. How many times he has a mission trip? Apostle Paul. Three times. When he had a second mission trip, yeah, he traveling. And then one day, he got a vision. Wow. And then, yeah, he got a beautiful voice. Come over to Macedonia to help us. So actually he has planned to go another place, but he obeyed to the Lord. And then he crossed Macedonia and then he entered uh, that village. So first village is uh, Philip. Actually the village name is uh, King Philip. Alexander, King Alexander's father's name is uh, Philip. So King Philip, so that village they, their name is Philip. They're using the, the King Philip's name. 
So the village name is Philip. And then Apostle Paul, yeah, he shared the gospel. Wow, Jesus, he's a real son of God. He died on the cross for you and me. And then he rose again. He's real God. Yeah. And then Holy Spirit touched their heart. And then three, four family, they gathering in their house. You know, Lydia. Yeah, Lydia, she's living in the Philippines. And then Lydia also helped the Philips, uh, the Paul, Apostle Paul. And then they keep going to their ministry. So they gathering the worship. So Philippia Church is a very lovely church. Especially when you see the Acts chapter 16, Apostle Paul, he was in the jail with Sila. Paul and Sila, they was in the jail. Philip jail, Philip, Philip jail there. And then at the night time, they worship God and they also kick there. And the, the door, the jail door is open. Yeah, you know that story. There are beautiful things uh, happening there. So always uh, Apostle Paul, he think about the Philippi church there. Wow, yeah, I had awesome experience there. I was in jail one night. Yeah, I pray and praise God with uh, Sila. And then, yes, he has a wonderful ministry there. But after 10 years, he was in the jail, not Philippines, in Rome. Rome, yeah, he got the jail. Actually, uh, that jail is uh, different with the uh, Philippines, is the jail. Rome jail, they, he renting the maybe one small house there, but one soldier always beside him. So Paul, he cannot go out to share the gospel. Always he must stay at home like a jail. So we, that's why we say, this is a jail. Like the, not like the small the cell. One house. But he cannot go out of the, the house like a jail. So Apostle Paul, he want to visit the, the Philippi church. Because oh, around 10 years ago, when I have a second mission trip, I start one small church there. Oh, are they okay? Or are they keep going? But somebody tell me about them. Wow. So, Apostle Paul, he want to teach more about Christianity. Christianity is not to know the Jesus Christ. That's not enough. Because Christian, we have to live is a Christian. Amen? Do you know who is Jesus Christ? Do you believe Jesus Christ? That's why we have to live as a Christian. Christianity is not for the knowledge. Oh, I read the Bible three hours, four hours in a day. Oh, I read the, this Bible three times, four times. Oh, very good. And you have to live as a Christian. Because the Christianity, not for the, your knowledge, not for your mindset, we have to do, we have to follow Jesus Christ. So, Apostle Paul, he write down this letter to Christian. This letter is not for the non-Christian. This letter didn't say, please believe Jesus Christ, not like that. This letter teaches us how to live as a Christian. That means we know already who is Jesus Christ. You accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And then, how can you live? So Apostle Paul, when he prayed for the Philippians members, oh, he want to say something, but he cannot go out there because the Roman soldier is beside him. Sir, you cannot go. Please stay here. So only one way. Write down the letter. Oh, my brother and sisters, how are you? Are you okay? And then 
Yeah, chapter 4, he teach them three points to be a good Christian, to be a real disciple of Jesus Christ. So this morning, I would like to share these three points to be a good Christian. It's a powerful disciple of Jesus Christ. A lot of Christian, they say, oh, I'm Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ. But sadly, their life is like <laughs> not real Christian. Yeah, we are human beings. Of course, we understand. But we have to try to be a good Christian. You know, our brothers and sisters, yes, we are good Christian. Amen? So this morning, I'd like to encourage you to be more good Christian. Sanctification, the processing, we have to grow up. We have to keep going. Oh, I have been the Christian for 10 years. Oh, it's enough. This level is enough. No. Every day, you have to level up. This year, you have to be much better than last year. This month, August, yeah, we have to be better life than last July. We have to grow up. So let's get the tip from the Philippians. Apostle Paul, he teach the three points to be a real Christian. First one, rejoice. Dear Christian, we have to rejoice our life. Rejoice in the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 4 say, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Christian, brother and sister, you have to rejoice. Where? In the Lord. Not in the world. Don't try to rejoice your life in the world. Even some Christians, they're looking for something to enjoy their life in the world. But brother and sister, Apostle, he say, Oh, my brother and sister in Philippi, 10 years ago I was there. I told you already, don't forget. Rejoice your life. Rejoice in the Lord. Our Father God, He has a beautiful plan for each one of us here. Amen? Even we do not know. Sometimes we couldn't understand. But we are sure. We have to trust. Know Him. You know Jesus Christ. And then, Trust Jesus Christ is different level. A lot of Christians, they know who is Jesus Christ. They die, and he died on the cross. Yeah, we know. But we have to trust him. Amen? Sometimes, oh, my life is not easy. We cannot understand why this kind of the bad happening in my life. Why my daughter, why my son is got sick? Why I have to lost my brother? Why this kind of happening in my life? Last month I lost my job. Yes, that's our real life. How can I rejoice? So that's why Paul asked you, rejoice in the Lord. When we see our real life, wow, it's not easy. My balance in the bank account, oh, almost zero. Sometimes it's minus. Oh, I lost my job. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's, a, that's a fact. But when you stay in the Lord, when you keep praying, when you keep the worship God, yes, God will give you joyful heart. And the God will give you the very peaceful heart. This morning also, when I came to this church, in the morning, I lost my peace. Because I have to come to this church here in the morning. Hindi service is start at 8.30. So I have to be here maybe around 8 o'clock here. Yeah, because I have to share the word of God. So as a guest speaker, I want to be here earlier, maybe 30 minutes before to start worship. So 8 o'clock, yeah, 
I come out, but still my wife is in the house. <laughs> so I call, honey, come, it's time to go. And then I turn on the engine, and then I sit in the car. But 10 past 8, still she didn't come out. Oh, I lost my peace. <laughs> and then I'm getting angry. <laughs> it's time to go now. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, quarter past 8, <gasps> we'll be late. 8.30 <laughs> they start to worship. But my wife is still maybe, oh, maybe this one or this one. <laughs> like they're on the mirror. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> oh, so I get angry. I get angry. Oh, my anger is here. I get angry. Come. She sit here. And then, oh. if she say, oh, honey, sorry. But she didn't say sorry. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. I know you'd go. But. I expect something, oh, sorry, please, sorry. If she say like that, it's okay. But she didn't say sorry. So my get more angry. <laughs> oh, I have to preach this morning. I have to ask them, all church members, rejoice. But my heart is not like that. <laughs> so I was so disappointed this morning. Yes, I have to preach in the old church members. Rejoice, all Christians rejoice. But this morning, that happening is making me angry. Ah, oh, so I was very depressed. Yeah, Pastor Edwin, yeah, he wait, waiting to welcome me. Just I shake hand, but my face, <laughs> maybe it's something. <laughs> yeah, so I just came down here and then sit here. And then the worship team, they start to worship, start to worship. So I start to pray, oh God, please help me. I have to share the word of God, but my heart is still angry here. So help me, help me. And then we keep worship. Even I couldn't understand the Hindi, the language. They start yeah, worship and then kinna mahan, kinna mahan, they <laughs> worship God. Yeah, how great is our thou art, how great thou art. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit start touch my heart. Yeah, and then the Holy Spirit removed my anger from my heart. And the Holy Spirit gave me peace and joy for her. It's a great opportunity to share the word of God in front of my brother and sister here. So, yeah, before I share the preaching, Holy Spirit healed my heart and then removed my anger and then he gave me the peace. Brother and sister, like that. So that's why Apostle Paul asked to all the brother and sister in Philippi, he knows them very well. Their life is not easy. At that day, they colonized by the, the Roman Empire. When they Believe Jesus Christ, Roman soldier, they kept, and then they lost their brother. They feeding their brother to the lion, and then they make the fire to burn their brothers. Oh, their life is not easy. Roman's empire, they persecuted all the Christian. How can they rejoice? How can they keep worshiping their heart? Their real life, their fact, is a very hard time. But Apostle Paul, he write down, rejoice in the Lord. I know your situation very well. So that's why Christian, if we want to be a real powerful Christian, even your life is not easy, even you lost your family, even the Roman Empire is persecute you, but we have to rejoice. In the Lord, always, because nobody cannot take your salvation. You can lose your free, 
Apostle Paul also, he lost his free. Just he have to stay in the room. He cannot go out. Maybe somebody take your job. You can lose to your job. You can lose to your health. You can lose to your children. But you cannot lose your salvation. Amen? Nobody can take your salvation from you. Because Jesus died on the cross to save us. And then you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. So, a lot of happening in our life, but we have to rejoice in the Lord because our salvation. Habakkuk, prophet Habakkuk, he said like that, chapter 3, verse 17, 18. I do not have any fruits. I do not have any grave in the vine. Yeah. The plugs may be cut off from the forest and there are no hurt in the stars. They mean, wow, I lost everything. I do not have anything. I do not have even one dollar in my pocket. But Habakkuk say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. That's the only the reason why you can rejoice. Only one reason. Oh, you rejoice because you have a good car. You can rejoice. You have a big house. Oh, your children, is, yeah, they are very smart. No. Even, not like that. You lost your house. You do not have any car. Even you lost your health. But we can rejoice. Only the one reason. Why? Because salvation. All oh, brother and sister. Yes. We can. Because our Father God, He will never give up. You are chosen people. You are so special. He knows your name. He knows your family. He knows your all the situation. Amen? He is almighty God. He will help you. Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2 say, Where does help my help come from? Lift up your eyes to see the mountain. Where is the help? Where does your help come from? My help come from? The Father God. He make the heaven and earth. Amen. Lift up your eyes to see God. Oh, I need help. How can I solve this problem? Oh, brother, could you help me? Oh, sister, pastor. Yes, you can ask to other people to help you. But don't forget, originally your help come from the Father God. He will help you. Yeah, of course. He will help you in supernatural way. Yeah, you can be healed. Of course, supernatural way, He can help you. But also, He can help you through the, your brother, through the, your church members, like that. Please, see the, your brother and sister. If somebody need help, yeah, pray. And then you can help them. And then later maybe they can help you. God working among us. Amen. As your father, I cannot help my daughter perfectly. So always I told her, if you need some help, please pray. As a father, yeah, my ability is very limited to help you. But our Father God, He's your real Father, not me. <laughs> so please pray to God, our real Father God, He will help you. 
2018, I came to Fiji as a full-time missionary here. 2018, my daughter, he was uh, 17 years old. Just he, she finished uh, until form three, like that. Just middle school, she finished. And then I brought her to Fiji here. Oh, mom and daddy, we have to go to Fiji because of God told me to be a full-time missionary there. My daughter, oh, daddy, I do not want to go to Fiji because my friends are here. I want to have a high school here. I want to keep going to my secondary school in Korea. I do not want to go. But I asked her, daughter, Sharon, my daughter is Sharon. We must go to Fiji. Mom and daddy, we are servant of God. Servant of God, we have to obey to the Lord. So I brought her. But she is a good girl, so she obeyed to me. And then she came to Fiji. One month, three months, four months. And then really, really, she couldn't find her calling. This calling is just for mom and daddy, not for the daughter. So my daughter, daddy, I'm not missionary. Mom, you and mom and daddy, you got beautiful calling from God to be a busy missionary here, but not me. Don't push me. <laughs> yeah, 17 years old girl. Yeah, like that. So we pray, we pray. Okay, and then. We decide, okay, we want to release you. That's you are right. That's calling is just for me and my wife, not you. So we pray together and then we ask, okay, if you got a good mark in IELTS English test, and then you can go to the New Zealand or Australia, okay? And then she studied very hard. And the next month, she got the result. See? 6.5 is enough to go to the Australia. So she got the, the good point to apply the university. So we released her to go to the Canberra to join the, some university, Canberra University there. And then we asked, told her, okay, Sharon, yeah, you can go. Mom and daddy here, so yeah, if you something happen there, we can fly and then we can help you. Don't worry. Fiji and Australia is not far. So if something happens, just call me and then we can go there and we can help you. But after she flying back, after two months, whoa, COVID-19 come. <laughs> wow. All the Fiji Airways stopped flying. We cannot cross to the Australia. Oh, all the national border is closed. So what? So my daughter, she called, oh, daddy, what can I do? And then I told her, me too, what can I do? <laughs> Sorry, I cannot go there. Yes, as a father, it's very painful. Just a 17 years old girl asked me to help, but I can, I can, I cannot help her. How can? Just pray. I cannot go there, but Father God can go there. Amen? I cannot help my daughter, but Father God, Almighty God, He can help my daughter. So we have worry. Oh, how can I? help my daughter, worry, worry, because she called and then, oh, daddy, I do not know how to do this one, how to do this one. And then uh, mom and daddy, we worry. But yes, we open the Bible and then we read this Bible verse again. Rejoice in the Lord. Always, I will say it, rejoice. Yeah, that's right. That's why we can rejoice. Yes, Father, my life is not belong to me. My life is belong to you. My daughter's life also is belong to you. My daughter is not mine. My daughter 
is yours, Father God. Please help her there. So and we keep praise. We keep praise. Hallelujah. Praise you. Christian life, real Christian, like that. When you have something happen in your life, when you feel so, so depression, don't stay there. Stand up and then open your mouth and then say, God is good all the time. And then you can start to praise the Lord. That's a real Christian life. In, the, in a normal life, we do not know. But when we have something happen in our life, we will see about our face. Yeah. So all the ordinary Christian, all the normal life, yeah, looks the same. Yeah, all Sunday morning, they dress up, and then they bring the Bible, and then, yeah, they go to the church, and then they have worship one hour here, and then they go back. Yeah, looks like a good Christian. But Apostle Paul, he knows all the Philippians there. So that's why he say, rejoice. Your life is not easy. I know. A lot of happening there. A lot of persecute there. But rejoice your life. Last week, all the Asia country, they have a big problem there because very heavy, heavy rain there. The Asia country is a summer season now. And then heavy rain. Have you seen the, some news? Especially in China, the Beijing and the, all the other province, oh, the water flowed there because very heavy. Last 140 years, they couldn't see that kind of the heavy rain. But this year, 2023, then much is big heavy rain. So a lot of people, they lost their house. They escaped from their house. They moved down to other province. They even, they couldn't take the all other, their household things, their clothes. Just they keep, uh, they come out. They swimming, come out, they climb up their roof. So I saw the, some YouTube news. One family, yes, they climb up the, their roof. Father and mother and then two children. Wow, the water is, level is go up, go up. So they have to move out. They have to go somewhere. So father, he bring the two big bucket. He's swimming and then he take the two bucket and then he put his daughter, five year, looks like a five year old, five year old girl, put one bucket. And then other younger boy, looks like three year old boy, another bucket and then this father he's a brave man because he loved these children he want to save these children and then he start to push this bucket and then he's swimming one hand is swimming one hand is push these two bucket to save these children yes father's face is all very tired keep swimming keep swimming very tired on the bucket, these two children, one girl, one boy, they are smile. <laughs> they enjoy the boating there because your father is keep push, go this much, push, go this much. And then they, he, the one drone, drone camera is there, drone camera is surrounding the side. And then they saw the, the drone, wow, oh, the drone is flying. And then they, children, even they lost everything, they sit on the bucket, they keep smiling because these children they trust the father. The father is keep push them. Children of God, how about you? Did you lose your smile? Why? If you trust God, you have to keep smile. Amen? Amen? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you trust him? Amen. Amen. Why you cry? <laughs> Keep smile. Keep smile. Don't worry. Even something happened in your life now. 
You do not know how can we solve this problem. But our Father God, He knows. He has beautiful plan. He will bring one bucket and He will put you there on the bucket and then He will push you. He will push you to come out from the problem. Amen? Amen. So, yeah, that's why we can keep smile. Please show your smile to each other. <laughs> yes, brother and sister, beside you, please look at each other. And please show your smile. Yes. Christian life, we have to keep smile. Follow the Jesus Christ. It's not easy sometimes. But don't worry. Our Father God, He's Almighty God. He will be with you. He's with you. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel. Yes, Emmanuel. Always He's with us. So that's why Apostle Paul say, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice in the Lord. Yes, Kinoya brothers and sisters. Yes. Let's rejoice to be a good Christian, a powerful Christian. And second tips from Apostle Paul, pray. Second tip is pray. Not just pray. Pray with thanksgiving. Verse 6. Okay, let's see it. Verse 6. Apostle Paul will say like this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. Yes. Bible teaches us so many times about prayer, right? How can you pray? Where you can pray? When you can pray? Apostle Paul today teach us pray with thanksgiving. This is very important as a Christian. As a Christian, of course, pray is very important. Pray is my spiritual breath. <sighs> our physical breath without the, our physical body without breath in, breath out. Yeah, we will die. We are spiritual men, right? As a Christian, spiritually also, we have to breath in, breath out. What is this? It's a prayer. We have to keep praying to live as a Christian. How can we pray? Brother and sister, please do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Yes, we have to pray in thanksgiving. Okay, everybody, let's say, thank you, Lord. Could you make voice up? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No, no, no. We do all your heart. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you for new day. Every day when you wake up, yes, when you open your eyes, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for new days. Yeah, really, really. Because last night, somebody closed their eyes, but this morning, they couldn't open their eyes. Yeah, that's true. In the hospital, last night was the last night in their life. But this morning, wow, I opened my eyes again. God allowed me to wake up this morning. So thank you, Lord. And then, yeah, this morning we came to church to worship God. Yes, thank you, Lord. My children, they enjoy the Sunday school downstairs. Thank you, Lord. Yes. A lot of Christians, when they pray, they start to think what they need. Oh, God. You know, I need this one. I need a big house. I need a car. I need more, more, more. Of course, this can be prayer. But Christian, real powerful Christian, 
don't forget to thanks to the Lord because you have a lot already. Right? Please think about what God has done in your life. What you have. Of course, we need something. But don't forget to thanks to the Lord because God gave us a lot of things already. So we keep thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. One day, Jesus Christ is, went to the one village. When he entered the one village, 10 leprosy, 10 men with leprosy, they came to Jesus Christ to be healed. Right? At that day, the, the leprosy, oh, it's a big problem with their skin. Not only the problem with their skin, they cannot live in the village. If they have some leprosy, oh, priest, come. Hey, brother, go out from this village. You cannot stay here with your family. So they have to stay the far away from the village. And then they must come to check, to check with the priest. And then priest, they check. Okay, you go back to your family. Oh, still not good. Go out. So the man who has the leprosy, oh, it's a big problem. And then nearly, nearly they miss their children. As soon as possible, they want to go back to their village. So that's why they know Jesus Christ, he's a wonderful man. Wow, when he pray, the blind can see. When he pray, the man, he start jump, walk like that. So that's why they came to Jesus Christ and they asked Jesus, Master, Please help us. And then Jesus Christ, yeah. He asked them, okay, go back to the priest. Show your body to them, to him, the priest. So they went back to the priest. Hey, priest, please check my body. What happened? Wow, these 10 men be healed, perfectly healed. Yo, hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And then, 10 men be healed. How many men come back to Jesus Christ to say thank you? Only one man. Only one man came back to Jesus Christ to thank. Jesus asked to him, where is another nine? <laughs> yeah. How about you? You are one of the men or one of the nine men? <laughs> A lot of Christians, when you pray, when you got the answer of the, your prayer, they forget. They forget to praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Just they enjoy their love. Yes, I got it. I got it. And then they learn a way to enjoy their life. Apostle Paul also, he knows that kind of the happening in Philippi. So brother and sister, don't forget to thank to the Lord. Pray hard and pray with thanksgiving to the Lord. When you pray, yeah, sometimes you cry, cry, God, please help me. Please touch my son's body. Please let him be healed. Cry. God, I have to buy one house. Please help me. Yeah, and then later, your son get healed. You signed on the paper or oh, to buy one house. After that, some Christians, they forgot to thanks to the Lord. Just they enjoy their life. No. Real Christian, powerful Christian, don't forget to come back to Jesus Christ. God, thank you, Lord. It is your grace. It is your mercy. We have to praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. And then you make some thanks offering also to the Lord. Right? This is real Christian. But this 
In Luke chapter 17, these nine men, even their body is totally be healed. Their body is like a baby's body. It's all the clean. Yes. But they didn't come back to Jesus Christ. Nine men, they can serve. Yeah, they got healed. But they do not know about eternal life. Only one man come back to Jesus Christ. And then, yeah, he got healed. And then he got eternal life also. Eternal life. So, all of the Christian, our problem, yes, we have to pray for that also. And then, when you get the ends of your prayer, don't forget to thank to the Lord. As a mother and father, when you discipline your children, when you give something to your children, for example, maybe when you give them some cookie, yes, call to your boy, and then before you give the cookie to him, but you ask to him. A lot of mothers, they say, what do you have to say? Thank you. Yeah, you know, as your mom. And then when they say thank you, and then you give the cookie. Okay, little girl, come. Do you like a cookie? Yes. If they say anything, you keep the, your cookie <laughs> until they say thank you. And then you give the cookie. It's good discipline. Yeah, we have to say thank you. Somebody be kind to you. Oh, yes. We have to kind each other and then we have to say thank you each other. The older children, when they got good present from parents, we have to say thank you, daddy. Thank you, mom. We have to discipline our children like that. It's a Christian same. Our Father God, He's so happy when He heard from you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Our Father God is so happy. So let Him be happy with your prayer. When you pray, it's good. Though. It's a great time to have the communication with, your, with our Father God. Yes, Father. Yeah, today this kind of happening, this kind of happening in my working place. Oh, thank you for today. You protect me and then you guide me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, when you pray, please keep saying thank you to the Lord. And then our Father God, He is so happy. He's so happy because you say thank you. And then tomorrow, He wants to bless you more and more. He will make a wonderful day tomorrow for you. Yes, he has a beautiful plan. He see the right timing. And then to see, oh, this man, oh, this, my daughter, this my son. Oh, he's the right timing to bless them. And then he will bless you more and more. So thanksgiving to the Lord is very important. Even the Roman Empire, they persecuted a lot of Christians. But brother and sister in Philippi, don't forget to keep the thanksgiving to the Lord. My brother and sister, I do not know about your own life situation, but I want to encourage you. Please say thank you to the Lord. When you pray, don't forget to pray with thanksgiving to the Lord. Last one, third one. Practice is most important. Practice. Verse 9, chapter 4, verse 9, say like that. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Put it into practice. Yes. We learned a lot. We have heard very beautiful message from the pastor. Yeah, when I read the Bible, yes, I got very good message from Bible. I know how to live as a Christian. But knowing, knowledge is not enough. 
put it into practice. That's most important. Apostle Paul, he write down this beautiful letter to Ephesians members. The Ephesians, the ah no no to the Philippine, Philippine members. Until chapter four, yeah, chapter one, like this, like brother and sister. Chapter two, brother and sister. Three, four. Oh, it's, yeah. If you read the all the Philippians, chapter one to four, wow, it's a wonderful letter from Apostle Paul. Yes, I know. But knowing, reading. It's not enough. Why you have to listen the beautiful message? Why you have to read the Bible? Why you have to join the Bible study? Why? Put it into your practice. We have to live like that. Church is not Bible school. Church, we gathering to pray and worship God and encourage each other to be a real Christian. If we want to know the Bible, yes, if you go to the Bible school, you can study there. A church, we gather here and then we serve each other. We love each other. We pray for each other. Because that's Christian life. It's a one family. As a one body of Christ. So, Apostle Paul, he write down, my brothers and sisters, yes, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, that's not enough. Put it into your practice. You have to live like that. And then, God of peace will be with you. Why we lost your peace? Why are you angry? Why you fear something? Why you are disappointed? Why you are depression? Yes. Today, Apostle Paul, rejoice in the Lord. Pray. With thanksgiving. These two things, we have to put it into practice, into practice. Yes. If your wife makes you angry, or husband, rejoice. <laughs> if your wife is late, like me this morning, ha, 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 just <laughs> laughing. <laughs> yes. Rejoice. Forgive all the sister as your wife. Sometimes your husband make you angry, right? Sometimes your children make you angry. Don't forget. Rejoice in the Lord. Keep smile. If your boys, if your daughters make you angry, just hug them and they smile. Say, God loves you so much. You are so special. You are children of God. God bless you. God has beautiful friend for you. My boys, my son, my girl, my daughter. Don't worry. Yes, we are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. When you pray, our Father God, He will start blessing your children. Yes, you are naughty boy. Go out. <laughs> oh, you are very naughty like your father. <laughs> Don't judge them. What will you do in your future? Oh, you are very naughty. You are so foolish. You cannot do it. No, 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 no. You have to be very careful to keep your mouth. Encourage your word. Lovely word, blessing word, right? Keep it into your practice. 
I know, we know everybody. We are good Christians. We know, we learned a lot. We have heard a lot of good messages from the pastor. But one problem, you didn't put it in your practice. So this morning, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9 says, put it into your practice. Kinoya, brother and sister, after this worship service, this afternoon, when you go back home, start put it into your practice. Amen? Yes, please. That's a real Christian. That's the best way to be a powerful disciple of Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus, three years, he showed us how to serve other people. Washing feet, his disciples. Like that. Jesus Christ, He showed us how to love each other, how to encourage each other. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Amen? Maybe some of you do not know. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Amen. Yeah, we have to be very sure. Amen. God called us. To be a powerful disciples of Jesus Christ. And then, Holy Spirit, this morning, teach you how to. First, rejoice in the Lord always. Second, pray with thanksgiving to the Lord. Third one, put it into your practice. Amen. Yes, this morning, I want to challenge you. If we want to be real powerful Christian, let's commit our life again. If we want to be powerful disciple of Jesus Christ, yeah, let's commit our life again. I know you are very good Christian. I know every day you pray. I know every day you try, try. But this morning, yeah, let's decide again. Okay, I will rejoice in the Lord always. Okay, I will pray with thanksgiving to the Lord to be a good Christian. And then I will not give up to follow Jesus Christ. Every day, I will put into my practice. Even I'm not perfect, of course. As a human being, we are not perfect Christian. But try, try, try. Every day, we have to keep going to follow Jesus Christ. Brother and sister, if we want to be powerful Christian, could you stand up this morning? Okay, let's stand up. That means is I commit my life. Father, I'm here. I'm stand up. I want to stand up in my faith. Yeah. My body without spirit is dead. Right? My faith without the work without doing is dead. James chapter 2, verse 26 say like that. So help me. Holy Spirit, my faith is still alive. That means I want to keep doing something. Okay. So this morning, yeah, thank you. All my brothers and sisters, yeah, let's close your eyes. And the worship team, please come. So when they make the beautiful sound, please think about your life. Am I a good Christian? Am I, am I a real powerful Christian? Am I a real disciple of Jesus Christ? Yes, I will not give up to follow Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, this morning, I got a beautiful letter. 2,000 years ago, Apostle Paul, he write down the beautiful letter to the Philippine church, for, for the Philippians. But not only for the Philippians, but also to me. So this morning I got a beautiful letter. 2,000 years ago, Apostle's letter I got this morning. Thank you, Lord. Please help me. I want to keep praising you. With all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind. Because 
You are the Lord. Yes, and then we pray together. Close your eyes. Even you don't need to make the, the big voice, but let's pray together now. Let's pray together. Open your mouth. Yes, Father God, please. Help us to keep praising you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my life. My life is belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my brother and sister here this morning. Thank you for your presence this morning. Father, yes. We are encouraged this morning. I want to keep following you, Jesus Christ. I want to keep the practice in my life. Thank you, Lord, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Yes. Every day, new days is very precious in my life. Please, Holy Spirit. Anointing each one of us here, all of my brother and sister, anointing with your precious oil to worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Father God. I surrender. I surrender because you are my King. Because you are my boss. Because you are my king, thank you, Lord. Please bless all my Lord. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you for wonderful this morning. Yes, Father, we are chosen people. Thank you so much. Thank you for your amazing grace and wonderful love. You choose us and then you read us until now. Father God, this morning we commit our life again. Because you are my king. Because our life is belong to you. Father God, we will rejoice. We will rejoice in your presence. Father God, we will give thanks to the Lord. We will give thanks to you. Father God, because your love is unconditional love. Your love is unlimited, unfailing love. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit, please encourage all of us here to keep going to follow Jesus Christ. Yes, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, put it into practice. Yes, Lord, we want to obey to this word. Holy Spirit, please help us to put it into practice. We want to be a real Christian. We want to be powerful disciples. This morning we decide to follow you again. Holy Spirit, please read us. Thank you, Lord. We surrender. We surrender. Holy Spirit, please read us. And then please bless our children. Please read all our family and church members. Yes, we want to see wonderful miracle in our family. We want to see wonderful miracle in our church here. Father God, please keep with us. Thank you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.